everything, oh everything, yes everything is possible with God. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Are you singing? Nothing is impossible when you trust in, in His Word. Talking to the voice of God to thee Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone And rest upon His word For everything, oh everything Yes, everything is possible Heavenly Father, thank you for touching our lives, changing our lives with your holy word. We are so grateful. We love you, Jesus. Speak to our hearts. Bless our lives. Send us out of here to conquer the enemy, to defeat Satan, to win, and to do your will. We thank you, Jesus, for your blessing in our lives. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Now, today I'm going to continue on part two on the blessings of soul winning. Amen. So, Soul winning, which is the point number four in my book, Tell Them, you must be a soul winner because one of the blessings of soul winning is that it gives you great joy and it energizes you. Amen. Amen. There's joy. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 and sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. Amen. And then in verse 17, I think, it says, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Amen. Now, you find out that in the Bible times, they didn't struggle to identify devils. Nowadays, we have all sorts of reasons for things. But in the Bible time, they knew when devils were subject to them. As you go out of this place, devils will be subject to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, One of the things that is needed for our lives that we we actually want is joy. Joy is like a mature version of happiness. You know, happiness sounds and looks like something more fleeting and something that it's like, oh, we are just excited today. But joy is like a more mature Version. Can we have the definition of joy, please? Can somebody check what is the meaning of joy? What does joy mean? Joy the passion or emotion excited 
by the acquisition or expectation of good. Pleasurable feelings or emotions caused by success, good fortune, and the like, or by a rational prospect of possessing what we love or desire, gladness, exhilaration of spirits, delight. So, perhaps a good feeling that is caused by success or good fortune. You see, now that is something that is very important in your life because the Bible says that when they went out to preach, they came, up, they came back with joy. So when you do the work of God, the Bible says that there's a lot of joy in heaven over one sinner that is saved. But the Bible says here that the 70 who were sent out two by two to do the work of God, they, apart from the people in heaven who were happy, the 70 themselves who went out, they came back with joy. Amen. So your life becomes happier and better when you are involved in the work of God. Now, you may think that your life becomes happier when you have money. But I can tell you that there are a lot of people, the, the saddest people in the world are often the richest because they don't have a sense of purpose. What do I live for? You see, we have problems of rich people and problems of poor people. The problems of poor people are a little easier to solve because they have usually some short-term goal to accomplish. Like maybe I need 100 CDs by the end of the month. I just need 1,000 CDs to pay my school fees. I just need 7,000 CDs to buy a car. I just need 2,400 to pay my two years advance. These are short-term problems which have a clear solution. But rich people, they have the school fees. They have the house. They have the 100 cities. They have the cars. They have what again? Visas. They have, they have it. So what, 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 what should I work for? What should I do? So the prince of Wales or the prince and the princesses in England and some of these other places, they have to create something to make themselves happy. There's nothing to work for. There's nothing to live for. There's no reason to be on earth. And that is why people even get mental problems. You know, some time ago, it was easier to get, to become a specialist, to get a program or to get access to the training to become a psychiatrist because nobody wanted to do. But these days, they need so many psychiatrists all over the world that it's more difficult to get even access to the program. They would rather get, let you be a gynecologist or surgeon. They are always tired. The psychiatrists, there are so many people have problems. And you see, mental illness, you, you, it may look sometimes, the person just looks queer or somebody, it's a mental illness. <laughs> or sometimes bad behavior, it's, it, it's a problem. So there's a lot of mental uh, problems. And, and one of the things is that people's thoughts are not working well. And people are not happy. And there's no joy in life. And there's a lot of sadness in the world. So, 
One of the great benefits of becoming a soul winner is that you suddenly have a new vision for your life. You suddenly become energized with energy. You get it? To achieve something for God. If I was thinking of money or to have achieved something would make me happy and rest, then from now and even before now, I have nothing to do because I've already built a church. I have churches and I have written books. There's nothing to do. I hope you get what I'm saying. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to achieve for me in that regard. Many of the things I've achieved, most people have lived 10 lives, have not achieved it. That's the truth. Yeah. So, God gives us something that gives us a reason for living, which is very unique and which never will fade away. And that reason is the reason of the same reason for God sending his son to come and die on the cross is that reason for God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So soul winning is the greatest motivation for your life both now and in the future, both now, whether you are a minister of the gospel, whether you have achieved a lot already, whether you have money, whether you don't have money, it is like something to spare you on. Now, it is well known, it's a well known fact that there is a correlation between having motivation for living makes you live long. Yes, it makes you live long. That is why sometimes people would, you, you want the patient to be motivated. Because when people are motivated, they live. They live. It, it, the brain actually controls and affects the responses of your body. That is why the most dangerous year of your life is apparently the year in which you retire. Yes. Most people, uh, not most, but a lot of people die within the first two years of uh, retirement. And the most dangerous year is the first year of retiring. So, because there's nothing to do. I've lived, <laughs> I've been paid, my children have grown up, there's nothing to do. I have money, I have where to stay, I, have, I can eat. And so, a lot of people die in the first two years of retirement. That's why I don't plan to retire. Yes. I don't plan to retire. I wouldn't advise anybody to retire. Yes. But you see, the government has a way of making people retire because they're trying to, they need to create jobs for people. That's actually the reason why they, 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 they let people retire. They're trying to create jobs for others. You see. But it's a very dangerous thing to retire. And it's dangerous for churches to retire from soul winning. Very dangerous. That's when the church can become something that you, you can't even imagine what it's, it's going to become. So, soul winning is the master key for all of us to have joy and motivation. When I hear the testimonies of people being saved, I sort of have a spurt of life and I feel, oh wow, it's worth doing it. Oh, keep on doing it. You know, keep on doing it. And, you know, there's more to be done. Come on, keep going. You get it? Keep moving. So there's some joy that comes to you. Now, you look at your life. How many have cried quite a bit? since you were born in this world, in your short life, you've cried quite a bit. I want to see your hand. Now, 
The Bible says, and there's a song we have like that, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come. Now, if the evil days haven't come and you are crying, then what is it going to be like when the evil days come? Because you are so young and you are telling me that you've cried quite a bit. Huh? Hey. How many girls have cried out of your heart that seems to be cheering in different directions? Hey. Now, you see, the Bible is amazingly true. You must respect, if you don't respect anything, respect the Bible. Because the way it is true is sad. Sad and bad and terrible. When he says, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come. Trust me. I'm telling you, if you don't trust me, trust the Bible. It is true. The days that are ahead are not as nice as the days when you are experiencing as a young person. They are not as nice. I didn't write the Bible. Yes. I don't want to frighten you or bore you with things. But I just want you to believe the Bible. How many on this side have had some sad days and you were really crying and crying? Look at boys lifting their hands here. You are lifting your hands as if you are girls. Because I'm not talking about those who cry when they are talking. I'm talking about crying from sadness. Yeah. When you are younger, you attend more weddings on Saturdays. When you are older, you attend more funerals on Saturdays. Yes. And you know how there are some weddings you can't say, I can't, I'm not going. When you get older, there are funerals you can't say, you will not go. The way it is, you have to go. But the way the person is, and the way you've been with the person, you've got, you've got to be there. So, thank God for a good job. Yeah. A job of winning souls. You know, when I started doing Healing Jesus Crusade, I, I became younger. When I, when I came to reach out further to the First Love Church, I became younger because everybody around me is a young person. And all the issues I'm dealing with are young issues. Which are nicer. You see, I'll tell you something. Let me listen to me, you people. When I talk, I pray that you are listening. You know, have you heard of um, when you say somebody is a physician? Do you know what it means? The person, no. The person, when you are specializing in medicine, we have one particular specialty called internal medicine so you have a surgeon you have a gynecologist you have an ear specialist eye specialist anesthetist and so on but then we have one of them called internal medicine those are the people that deal with high blood pressure diabetes um, kidney disease liver disease I mean a lot of type of things, heart failure and heart problems and then there's another special specialty called pediatrics. Do you see? Now pediatrics is the same as the internal medicine but for children. Do you see? Because in pediatrics we have pediatric surgery for people who operate on babies and children. So the we have pediatrics and internal medicine. They are similar. Do you see? Now, you'll be far happier working at the pediatrics than working at the medicine place. Because in the medical ward, this one is breathing, is going down, is going up. This one is on a drip to sustain him, to revive him. This one has liver failure. This one has kidney failure. This one has, everybody has something wild. 
But the pediatrics, they, they say, this one has malaria and he's coming out. Or he has some typhoid and he's recovering. Or things that cure. And they go home. 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 But on the medical world, 16 people can die on one day. Yes. You can be doing work round and they will just die. After you discharge them here, when you get it, say that he's just died. I've seen it before. So when the Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days, even in medicine, the practice of medicine, you see a different world when you are dealing with children and when you are dealing with the grown-ups. Yes. So, the joy of the Lord that you are going to develop within you, you are going to develop you see, the Bible says the, the 70 came back with joy after going out to do the work of You don't get that. Most You go to your boyfriend and come back. When you are coming back, you'll be thinking, did I do the right thing? Is it the right thing that happened when I went? Am I pregnant? Do I have a disease? Me, crowd, this guy will leave me just now. This girl, I don't know. I've changed my mind. And so on and so forth. Yes. Is it not true? Yes. But when you come back from soul winning, you are filled with real joy. Hallelujah. So those of us here who have not learned the art of soul winning, you are missing out on the greatest joy medicine. Yes. What is going to give you joy and make you a happy person. Oh, I don't need to be happy. I'm okay as I am. Now, let me tell you, don't talk quickly like that when I'm preaching. You get it? You need happiness. These days, the brothers are looking for happy people. Yes. Yes. And, and I will advise you, look for somebody who is happy. Avoid the unhappy and unlucky. Yes. Avoid what? Unhappy and unlucky. Yes. Avoid them. Look at their face and look at their eyes. Look at them when they are not conscious that you are looking at them. And see the sadness. Sometimes the eyes even drop to the right and the left. You think I don't know things? One day a little boy told his mother, Mommy, you think I don't know things? I know things. Look at their faces. When their face is relaxed, then you see that this place will calm down. It means she's very strict. Okay, it's okay. You, you, I don't want to... Now, psychology today says results showing from a test that having a strong sense of purpose is positively correlated with more successful aging. Like you do well as you get older. Over an 18-year study, they studied people for 18 years and they said that having a strong sense of purpose is correlates very well. It correlates with doing well as you get older or successful aging. Individuals scoring higher on a sense of purpose like the purpose of soul winning reported lower functional disabilities. What are functional disabilities? Different parts of your body start changing and you are not able to be as you were. How many would like to be 90 and you are still driving your car? Yes. 
Yes. It will happen to you. Yes. They showed a better self-rated health fewer symptoms of depression compared to individuals who didn't have a strong purpose. Then having a strong sense of purpose was linked to better performance on tests of their memory and their mental speed. Also using survival analysis Researchers showed that having a strong sense of purpose was also related to living longer. Amen. Amen. In explaining these results, the researcher and his co-authors suggested that having a strong sense of purpose allows people to set meaningful goals in life and manage their time and efforts more effectively. According to so and so, people face mental and physical barriers as they grow older and deal with the realities of aging. Amen. So, individuals with a high sense of purpose who can adapt to their changing lives by finding new ways of achieving their purpose or achieving a purpose are able to stay mentally and physically active for longer. Not only does that improve emotional well-being, but it can also lead to a longer and more productive life. This is why in psychology. Those of you who are doing psychology, you better take notes. Having a strong sense of purpose can also be important in acting as a stress buffer. We all face stress, especially as we grow older. Realizing that our bodies aren't as strong and healthy as they want to imposes new worries. And that is predictable stress. Unexpected problems can also come. All right? Which is why having a strong sense of purpose can be especially, especially important Apart from promoting a sense of well-being, having set goals can make it easier to cope with unexpected stress and develop new ways to cope with age-related changes. And it goes on in a lot of, what you call it? But I'm just saying that even psychologists are telling us that um, there is a blessing in having a strong purpose and that is what I am teaching you today you must energize energize hallelujah by becoming an ardent dogged soul winner in the first half you see this is one of the biggest churches in in the city Just, just where we are here so it can take away your energy but now we want to have We want to have 10,000 and 20,000 people here. Suddenly, we are are nothing. Suddenly, there's, I mean, it's it's like now there's a crisis and there's something important to start doing. It's like we, we have to just forget about everything and get into it. Suddenly, I mean, it's like we are nowhere. We need land. We need this. We need to expand. We need to win souls. We need to have more bus centers. We need to pray. We need to fast. Suddenly, I mean, we, we, we have what to do. Yes. And that keeps away sickness. It keeps you alive. It keeps you alive. Because, you see, if you look at your life, you realize that it's a small goal that you are looking forward to. Some of us want to get married. That marriage that you are planning to get is actually what's keeping you moving. Yes. When you get married, you want to have children. That's keeping you moving. Then after that, you want your children to go to this school. That's also keeping you moving. Then after that, you need to pay their fees. That keeps you moving. So it's the purpose that keeps the engine going in life. That is why when you retire, then it's like there's no more reason to live. And psychiatrists and psychologists, we don't really understand the connection, but it's connected to life. But when it switches off, then it start, you start to die. Wow. That's why many people die when they retire. First two years. So, here we are. Thank God. 
how far he's brought us. But thank God for the inspiration of people like Bishop Oyedepo, who have 50,000 in the hall, 50,000 outside in a service, and almost four services. With, I mean, almost 400,000 people coming to church on Sunday morning. And I cry, yes, Ghana is smaller. The whole of Lagos, the Lagos alone is the whole of Ghana. But um, it's still comparatively, I don't think that we are anywhere. So to, to not be able to have 10,000 people or 20,000 souls that we have suddenly, I have a reason to wake up. What do you think? I have something to do. And as we rise to do that, all the benefits, do you see, that are hidden in that purpose, including your well-being and your joy and, and, and so on, are connected. When I got married or maybe before, when we had the church, sometimes my wife would be waiting as we are doing meetings. I realized that it's not a good thing. But when you are waiting for somebody, you, 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 it, it, is, it is sickening. Because you don't know why the person is not coming. That's the point you think the person is just doing unnecessary things. And if you don't take care, you get upset. And it can lead to unhappiness and quarrels. People who don't come to the church, they, what, I, what, what did you go and do there? You're coming now. There's no church that comes at this time. Why? But if you are part of the church, you, you will understand why we are here. So once you are not active, you become an attraction for evil spirits wow. and evil thoughts. And the joy will go away. Even your marriage, the joy will go away. Yes. There are times I've sent missionaries out because they were the two missionaries that were there, they became closer. I mean, husband and wife. Because there's nobody. There's nobody to even talk to. Yes. So, every one of us must rise up for our own sake and our own joy levels, your mental health. Yes. Let's have this purpose. For my mental health, I need to have a strong vision to win souls. But I don't need any soul in anybody's church. There are thousands of souls today <coughs> on campus. Legon has 50,000 people Just here, 50,000 people. They are there. And UPS, I don't know how many thousand they have. They are all there. And from the testimonies we've heard, people are badder than bad, I tell you. <laughs> this Sunday morning, you see, pastors, children, they are all sleeping in their house. In their, many of them are not going, going to church. And you ask them, so I'm a Christian, but they are not. So, soul winning is becoming the main stay. And every one of us here is going to be a soul winner. Soul winning in our church is not meant for a soul winning squad. There's no soul winning squad here. Everybody here is becoming a soul winner. If you can't be a soul winner, we won't marry you. When you propose to us, we will say no. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Beloved, let everybody be involved in the work. If you are not involved, your beloved will come to work in the church. He will be coming home happily. Or you may be married. Come home happily. Instead of them to come and welcome you at the gate. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you've come home. I'm so glad you are back at last. I've been waiting up for you. 
I've been expecting you. And I'm so excited to see you. Come on, let me help you hold your things. And let's go in and take our rest together, baby. That is if you have somebody who understands. But if you don't have somebody who understands, when you arrive, they'll look at you. It's absurd for you to come at such a time. Nonsense. You claim you are in church. What is church? Or if they don't say anything and they are the quiet type, you just get a moody face there. Eyes will not even come from the ground. You better go and find, you know how to use a microwave. You see, it is there. Go and hit your own thing if you want to hit it. If not, eat it cold. Or you go and meet your fufu without soup. Those who came early at the soup. And the fufu is there with, for you. And after all, the money you gave me can only make the fufu. There was no money for the soup. Yeah, a certain wife, she made a fufu for the husband and there was no soup. When I said, what is that? Oh, the money you gave me, this is what it can do. It has made a fufu, there is no soup. All my stories are true. Except the ones with foxes and lions and rabbits. How many want to come home to a depressed and angry person? You see, the joy level of the person is low because that person is not involved in the work like you are involved in the work. That's why sometimes when you are beloved, those in somebody from somewhere, we say, bring the person here to church first. Though. Because I tell you, the person doesn't know and it, it, it may be a strange thing. It's like, no! What's going on? My church, we close at 11. By 12, even the pastor has lunch with his wife every Sunday. He said it in his preaching. That he, he, he eats lunch with his family every Sunday. Sunday afternoon is part of their family routine. He's a family man. How many want to come home to somebody who is so happy to see you? You are raising your hands, Pa. You see, everybody likes the same things. So. Everybody likes the same things and doesn't like the same things. So joy, 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 joy. Very important. Joy. And the Bible says, the 70 went out and they came back and they were full of joy. So soul winning is going to change your mood. All moody people are going to become demoodified. Brothers, let me tell you something. Don't go by the happiness you see in church and the happiness people give when they're outside. Like people laughing, chatting. Okay, they look so carefree. You have to know the person better. Yes. Yes. Because, because sometimes some people are so moody that they compensate for the moodiness by being super friendly in public and in church. And sometimes people are nasty, so they compensate by being pleasant to people outside. Yes. You will escape such a moody person in your life. Now, if there are more girls than boys, and you therefore as a brother have options, why should you select an option that is not going to work for you? God forbid. Brothers, God is going to bless you with a soul winner wife. Hey, she will come home sweating. Ha! Hey, Julie, you are now come say, I, I, I won seven souls. Then you realize that you didn't win many souls. And she'll, she'll be in a good mood. She'll be singing. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. 
Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. How many would like to come home to somebody who's going, ta 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 da We should not be in a good mood. Rather than some strict, she's walking through the house. Hey! You, you can't even call the person. You cannot even touch the person. If you like touch, you say, this is what I don't like. When I'm feeling hot, then you are, you are touching me. I don't, I don't like that. I'm working. You are just not doing nothing. I don't like all these things. Hey. If you even try to touch, I'm the only one working in this house. Hey. But if you come home, somebody says, ta 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 how many would like to come home and you don't even know what the person is happy about but it's just to relax the whole environment hey. all sisters are being given a free and happy spirit sister say amen or don't If you don't like these things that I, I talk about and teach, please go to another branch. You see, there's another branch, some other place we can even get an Uber for you. <laughs> I tell the person, that, look, I can get an Uber for you. If this type of preaching makes you uncomfortable, there are Ubers. I'll pay an Uber for you right now. Soul winning makes you joyful. I said soul winning makes you joyful. Number five. You must be a soul winner because the true greatness of any church is not on how many it seats, but how many it sends. Yes, how many it sends. Amen. Now, How many it sends, not how many it sits. So, if our church is going to be a great church, it's not about how many people are sitting, but how many are workers. That's why Jesus said, the laborers are few. Yes, the, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. <coughs> the sendable people are few. Sendable means a laborer. Yes. So, I don't want to just have great people sitting here. Wow, uh, this is my car. I have a Mercedes Benz. Are you selling carpets? You are selling curtain material. You are selling paint. If that's what I wanted, I would have stayed at the Kodesh. Because at the Kodesh, I have curtain material dealers and carpet sellers and a lot of people there, big, important people. I still prefer to be able to send you than to just sit you. I prefer to be able to send you than to sit you here. The greatness of a church is connected to how many people you can send not how many people you can sit so you must not just be someone whom I've been able to sit down here but somebody I can send go, come go, come, go, come, go, come go, go, go everybody go and bring a soul how many can I say go and bring a soul go and win a soul we are crossing 20,000 with ease. Amen. It's possible. I tell you, I'm energized. I'm energized. I said, I am energized. energized. I don't need glucosate for energy. I need soul winning for energy. And 
I'm turning you from a fornicator to a soul winner. Amen. From a liar to a soul winner. Amen. From a thief to a soul winner. Amen. From a sinner to a soul winner. Amen. Yes. I'm giving you a higher goal for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your goal is not just to do your hair Amen. and to get a man and to be engaged and to have a child. Amen. You ladies, you see, those of you, you, sometimes you see a beautiful girl. She got married, 21, 20, whatever. Then you have three children in succession. By the time you are 28, 27, 28, you've had three children, four children. Here's your husband, here's your ring, here's your wedding, here's your child. It's finished, 20 something. All your goals are fi finished. You realize that this is a small goal for life. Yeah, too small. There are higher things. An army of sendable Christians. That is what is happening here. How many cannot be sent? How many can be sent? O -o -o only here, only here. Can I send you? Yes. So I can send you today, Sunday, and I can send you, and I say, this Sunday, coming Sunday, a swelling Sunday or whatever it is, everybody, win a soul. Talk to somebody and bring somebody to the house of the Lord. Yeah. So winning. Sendable Christians. You watch me and see you see me going to follow money. You think I don't know where is money? And who has money? Yeah, I know things. I think I don't know things. But I'm following souls. Yes, souls. I want more Basenta leaders. Basenta leaders are sendable. Go and take a bus and bring people from this place. I want more Basenta leaders. You must aspire to become a Basenta leader. A Basenta leader is a sendable person. You send him to an area and say, you see this area, don't come empty-handed. There are people here. Bring them. That's a soul winner. Amen. Amen. And you see that your rank and your status changes as you do the work of God. You become more mature. Yeah. You know, there are people I can't even send. Sometimes I have to send someone to a country. There are some places I have pastors. I put them there. I tell them to build a church. They, they can't build. I have to send a girl to go and do the thing, to go and get things to, done. Because they are, they are not sendable pastors. They can't get anything done. They just send you back a list of excuses, a list of problems. Problems are everywhere, but we want somebody whom we can send. Don't come back with a list of problems. I send you somewhere, you just tell me all the difficulties that are there. And now we have to send somebody else to come and sit there to do what you who live there cannot do. Because you can't do the work. You know, God is calling us to rise up in this church and be a sendable group of people. Because your value depends on whether I can send you or not. Can I send you? Can I ask you to go? Can God send you? Can God say to you, go, I trust you, win a soul. When it says win a soul, there will always be young people. Don't think of grown ups have already decided. Don't think of any grown up. So that will be one, they are all children. So, those of you who can't relate with young people, you've missed your way. That's a soul winning there. It's finished for you. You will never win a soul. Yeah. If you want to win souls, it means you are sendable to the young people. You see, God has sent me to young people. Yes. I'm over 50 years old. My next major birthday, I'm getting to 60. So, I am sendable to young people. The songs that you enjoy, young people enjoy them in the church. The preaching you are listening to, young people are listening to that preaching. Yeah. What about you? Can you be sent to a young person? Yeah. You know? 
In all my pastoral work, one of the things that has, I mean, irritated me is when I send somebody on the mission field and then I still have to send somebody to come and just buy cement. Go and buy stones. If you take uh, Cameroon, we are building in three cities in Cameroon. If you take Zambia, we are building in about six cities in Zambia. Chingola and um, Ndola, Luansha, Lusaka, and so on. About six cities. And if you are living there, I have to send somebody, especially, I have to send a girl, a woman, to go and, 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 and negotiate to buy, I mean, just to do the work that you should be doing. It, it's something. And I think God is looking at us on the ground here. And he said that we are surrounded by a sea of souls. But you there, you can't be sent. You can only be seated. And God is telling us, listen carefully. Soul winning is a key to your mental health. It's a key to your value. Oh, yes. You know, when the government comes into power, they'll choose new ambassadors. Every time a government comes, they choose a new ambassador. Somebody they can send. Somebody they can put in America. Somebody they can put in Israel to represent them. Do you think you are ready to represent Ghana? How many of you think the next government is going to choose you as an ambassador? Why wouldn't they choose you? I mean, you don't even know what they, are, what they represent. What are they talking about? Nigerian, as our government sent here as they represent. You see now. So how many realize that when you are sendable, you are like a high level valuable person? And that is the, that is the essence in the church. How many high level valued people are there in the church? But from today, you are becoming one of the valued customers. Valued Christians. Amen. Amen. How many have ever met somebody with four fingers? And when you ask him, where is one of your fingers? So I was shaving and it came off. No. Shaving cannot remove a finger. Shaving can remove your beard. It is dispensable, but your finger, it will be there. So when you are very valuable, a, a slight something cannot remove you. It will take a major thing to move you. Your value is increasing today. Stand to your feet, everybody. Number six. You must be a soul winner because soul winning is the heartbeat of Jesus. Amen. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. The Son of Man has come to do what? And to save that which was lost. That is the whole purpose of Jesus coming to, 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 to this world. Yes. Listen. Hello? Hello? Uh -huh. Listen. Jesus did not come to build houses on earth. Huh? <coughs> One day, all these houses will not be there. And when Jesus was telling his disciples, you see this temple? One day, there will be nothing here. They couldn't believe it. But Jesus was the greatest prophet. When we go to Israel, we go to the Wailing Wall, if we have the time, because it's not one of the things I'm so keen on. But when you get to the wall, where people pray and they put prayer requests into the wall, they say that is the site of Solomon's temple. But when you stand there, you struggle to ask, so where is the temple? Is it here? Is it there? But actually, you, there's a place you go down underground. 
and there are, there, there are people underground and there's excavation deep down. Solomon's temple, which was about 4,000 years ago, is now under. You know, the earthly human creation is a very temporary thing. The purpose of Jesus was not to come and build any new church or come and build any new building, I should say, but was to win souls. He says, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So we also must sort of see the wisdom in what Jesus is doing. He's come to seek and to save the lost. So you too, your life must be seeking and saving the lost. Now sit down. Or you prefer to stand? Okay. Charlie, the weather is hot. I don't know how it is going to be in March. March is ocho cri cri. <laughs> dress down, yeah. When are, when are we starting dress down? First March. Swollen Sunday, third March. Yeah, you don't wear suits to come to church. Hey. You can wear your singlet and come. Uh, now, look at this, everybody. Look at Luke chapter 19, verse 10. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save. So, everybody, seek. Say, seek. seek. Yeah, you see, the lost are not just standing there. You have to seek them. Yeah, you have to seek them. That's why we don't win anybody because we are not prepared to go out of our way. But I didn't see any soul in my life. Yes, you won't see any soul in your life. Yes. You didn't seek for any soul. So, in Tina, you will not see any soul. Because all your life is covered with Christians. You don't meet unbelievers anymore. You are, you are in different worlds. So, you need to seek. You need to go out of your way to seek. And then to save. So from today, we are seeking. And I want you to start implementing what I'm saying. Seek and save that which is lost. Especially a, any young person. Any young person. It's, we need young people. The grown up, they've already decided what they want to do. But the young people, they are the people that will respond to the preaching of the gospel. So you are becoming a sendable person and you are now understanding the heart of Jesus. Few people understand your heart. When I ask a brother, is there anybody here who has a beloved? You have a beloved. Uh, how old are you? You have a beloved. Stand up, stand up. Why do you like your beloved? Let me tell you. Um, she, she's fun. She laughs. She's very, she likes to serve. She can cook well. I mean... <laughs> That's why you like her. Yeah. I mean, she's beautiful. She has, she has a great smile. When I see her, it's like, I mean. <laughs> wow. This brother is enjoying, I tell you. Is there anybody, any other brother who has a beloved? I want to know why. Why people have beloveds. You have a beloved? Why, why, what, 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 do, you, what do you like about your beloved? Um, one of the things I really liked about her is that um, when usually, I'm a very time conscious person sometimes, so I realized that whenever I was going somewhere, I needed to get there on time. Whenever I used to move in a large group, like my church, we were all moving, but I realized that every time, she's always ready on time, and one of the things that made me really like her. That she's ready on time. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, beloved, a potential beloved, you should see Tap some keys. Happiness and being on time. What do you like about your beloved? Um, I think one of, the <laughs> one of the main things I like about her is that she's very peaceful. So there's no quarrels, no fighting. She listens to me. She obeys me. Very peaceful. So if you can remain that way. Wow. 
<laughs> yes. People are giving credentials. But one of the things that I've also heard is that they say that she understands me. Yes, she seems to understand what I'm doing. And that is also something that is, you can see that the person you are relating with understands what is happening and understands what you are trying to do. Now, I want to say that most of the church doesn't understand what Jesus is doing. Oh. <laughs> it's like Jesus is trying to save the world and most of us don't even know what he's doing. We don't, we don't get it. We don't understand what his aim is. We, we feel that his aim is for us to get married this year and for us to be prosper and be blessed and have a series of victories. <laughs> it's as if that's the aim of God. But that's not the aim of God at all. His purpose now in this earth is to seek and to save the Lord. For which purpose the Son of God came to this world and died? I tell you. And that purpose will never change. No matter what's happening in your life. Yes. And we are supposed to be his beloved. And all we want is a series of victories. We want great things to happen to us this year. We want to marry this year. We want to have a child this year. That's not, what, that's not what's on his heart. Yes. Yes. That's not what's on his heart. Your little life is not, it's not the main thing. At all. I'm sorry. I, have I disappointed you? No. His heart is to seek and to say, God so loved. I mean, it seemed to be something big. That he gave his only son. Wow, that's a big thing to give your son. That whoever believes in him should not perish. People today, when you want to send their children on missions, you should see all kinds of complex things in the family. One family wanted to even sue us. Yes. One uh, family called for me that should come, and I said, I will not come because... When your son was going to work for Ghana Airways, did you call the manager of Ghana Airways whether he should come to the house to come and see you? I'm not going to know a new house to go and answer no questions. People don't have any respect for the church. What I want you to know is that Christ's aim, if you want to know, is not to restore democracy to Ghana or restore colonialism to or to bring a better Ghana out. These are uh, far from it. In fact, he has rather prophesied there will be wars, rumors of wars, confusion, earthquakes, plagues, epidemics. I mean, that's how the end is going to be. Floods, everything. Yes. The world is not heading towards more order. It's heading towards more entropy and confusion. Many African states are failed states. There's no real government in many, many African countries. Porous borders that's what he wants. I have news for you. If God is the one in charge of this world, then he's failed. Then he's a real bad government. But he's not. The song we used to say, he's got the whole world. In his, he's not got the whole world in his hand. The Bible says that God, the devil is the God of this world. It's, it's only when you think of the devil that you can explain how the world is. Why Ghana should be one of the poorest countries in the world when we have super intelligent people always in charge of things in the country? You know, there are some governments, they don't have educated people, they don't have very intelligent people. We, we have. We have people. People who have lived abroad, who have studied, they know everything. Huh? We know things. And our leaders know things. They know things, Pa. They see things. They study with other prime ministers. Yes. Yes. Tony Blair went to school. Margaret Thatcher, President Kufo, Tony Blair. They are all Lincolns in. Same school. Kwame Nkrumah was with... Uh, Lee Kuan Yew and those, those people, 
He knew them. He knew the ministers here. He wrote about them. We, we, we know things. But it's just amazing. Yes. So, Jesus is not the one doing this. Whole. The devil is the god of this world. That's why Nigeria has got so much oil. And I hear they have, Nigeria has more of other minerals than even oil. But that they've never, they don't even bother with that one because the oil is amazing. But they have more gold. I said they have more gold than Ghana. Yeah, yes. Just like Ghana has so much oil, we may have even more oil than Nigeria. Satan is the God of Israel. So, Jesus is not trying to, he's trying to bring order in Ghana, order in Togo. Togo is part of the Volta region. The Volta region and Togo, are, they are all speaking the same language. It's Volta region divided into two. It's more confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they speak the same language. Well, as soon as you cross into Togo, you see Ghanaian names. Mate, Jigbodi, this, they are all, they are all there. It's the same language, the same people. That's why they come to vote here and uh, in and out. Yeah, they see no reason why things should go on in Ghana without them having a say. We are all brothers. <laughs> I'm talking about the heartbeat of Jesus Christ. The heartbeat of Jesus Christ to restore wealth to Ghana or order to Nigeria or civilization to Madagascar. Please, I'm sorry to disappoint you. The son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Few people have the person's heart. Yes. One day we, we had a big project. And Yongi Cho was coming to the country. Yeah, it was a great thing for me. One of the greatest events of my life. They confirmed everything. We are coming. And we were building Kolegono. And I needed, we needed to just finish it. And I called Korea and I asked, will Yongi Cho dedicate my church? And they gave me assurances. When he comes, he will dedicate your, your church building. We were working feverishly. Suddenly, the contractor, he said he was going for, I don't know whether holiday or, or whatever. He disappeared. Yes, he vanished with all the work ended just as we were approaching. I couldn't even believe my eyes. I could not believe my eyes. I had to mobilize an emergency kind of work to make the thing. I mean, where Young Gicho was going to walk, in fact, exactly where he was going to walk, at all that place to come and then. I mean, how many people have built churches and you have such a great person to come and he's actually come and come to dedicate, come into the church and dedicate? Young Gicho stood in Kolegono and dedicated the church. Wow. But the person who was working for me, his heart was not thinking about what I was thinking about. I don't know what he was thinking about. Yes. And from that time, that was it. When you are with somebody important, you must ask yourself what is on this person's heart. Because you, 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 you behave completely contrary to how the person is thinking. Yes. And that was just our first project. Since then, we have built, built almost 1,000 churches. We are on it. So that person would have built all the 1,000 churches. Didn't build. That was the last project. Make sure you understand what is really happening. This man is preparing for a major event, the most major event of his life, maybe. Think about what is happening. You can't abandon the person right in the middle of it. Doing another vision. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's also important, but it's not the vision. 
Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't know what your, your mind is on. His mind is on other things. Do we have a song like that? Mind is on other huh? things. I've been thinking, thinking to myself. It seems your mind is on other things. <laughs> your mind is on other things I, I hope you are with me on this hot afternoon yeah as I've placed my heart on Jesus' wish as the years have gone by God has given me things which were dreams. Just far-fetched dreams. Yes. One day I was somewhere. I will, I will tell you the story in mysteries. I was somewhere. God showed me something. God didn't show me. I just saw it. I said, wow. But I never knew that what I was seeing there, that was an imagination. It was already mine. Yes, it was mine. Just put your heart on what his heart is on. Things which you don't prefer. Look, the things which God wants to give you, you don't know them. Because you are a local champion. I said you are a local boy. You don't know great things. Is it not true? Tell your neighbor, it seems you are a local boy. You see, you will be praying for local things. Don't know things. Yeah. Don't know things. Yeah. Tell you, God has wild things for you. So if you start praying now, you pray for you pray for local things. Small, small things. Funny things which look funny. God has great things that you don't have any idea what they are for you. Put your heart on his heart. Find out, Jesus, what are you trying to do? Jesus, what are you trying to do? Jesus, amazing. He's not trying to give you a series of victories. He's not trying to make you marry. He's not trying to give you money. No, his heart is on other, his mind is on something. That time I was trying to build the church, my mind was only, I was only day and night, get money here, do this, finish this, paint here, do this, fix this, plaster this. Oh, so where is the guy? He's traveled, he's gone abroad. I mean, he's gone abroad. Yeah. I couldn't believe my, I couldn't believe my, I couldn't believe my, my, my uh, and not even to tell me, even. Vanish like with vanishing cream. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I tell you, try to see what the person's mind is. Me, I know as I'm standing here, the presence of God is here. Jesus is here. If he could speak to you, he can He's speaking to you through me. He's telling you, this is what is interesting to me. Oh, huh? And you see, sometimes you, 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 your life is so different. That you need to accept that that's what the person wants. You need to accept it. And that's, how, that's what happens in marriage. Because a man is so different from a woman, you need to accept what the person wants. That this is what I want. Yeah. Because what we want as men, often very different from what is a woman wanting. So a, a man thinks you are making you happy, but she's not happy with what you are. And a woman, th- a, a woman thinks she's making you happy, but she's not making you happy. So that's how we are. And the same thing with God. Then we and God, we think we are making God happy. Look, the Pharisees, when they got Jesus, they say, you, you say you are uh, going to build the temple in three days. Bring the whip. Bring the whip. Shit! Stupid man! The, the, when they were beating God, they thought they, they were serving God. Shh! The high priest called the other pastors. It's better for one person to die. Jesus told them, he said, they are going to spit on me. They, he, they cleared their throat. Oh, so that they collect the flame from inside. And they spat on Jesus. Everybody came spitting. All of you come and spit on him. Chill. 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 Early morning spitting with fuse. They were blowing fuse like that. You 
see, you can be so far from the purpose of God and you are so full of energy and zeal. Jesus died on the cross for what? To build a university? Oh, please, you don't understand the Bible. He died on the cross to build a hospital, a school, an orphanage. No, he died to save people. It's in the process of saving people that all these other things, good things, they come out almost as side effects. The morals of society even change. Let us not shock God with our feelings, having a mind always on other things. Yes, God will have his mind on you. You'll be passing by a place where they are selling cars and you look at it and say, Charlie, the latest, uh, you know, if I am power, but not knowing that God is going to give you the next one. After that. Believe it. Yeah. By being a soul winner. Yes, by being a soul winner. What you can't do for yourself, God will do it for you. Put your heart on what his heart is on and watch the change that is going to come in your life forever and ever. There will be a change. Amen. Stand to your feet again, please. Hmm. Beautiful. Hey! Hmm. Number eight. How many numbers do you have? Six. Number seven. <clears throat> you must be a soul winner because soul winning prevents church splits. Amen. When a church splits, divided. No. You will not quarrel with your best friend. Because you've got a soul that is being demonized and you are fighting for the soul. Amen. And finally, number eight. Soul winning, hallelujah, will generate divine support and protection for your life. Psalm 95, Psalm 91, verse 14. Amen. Because he has set his love on me. Huh? Did you hear me? Are, are you looking at the scripture on the, on, the, on the stage? Because of what? Remember I was telling you the heart of Jesus. You see, because you set your heart on his heart. You get it? Yes. Genuinely. You know, one thing I can say, like, my, my wife is not like she's trying to be a Christian or she's trying to be a soul winner. It's, it's, it's genuine. You know? Because anything that you pretend, when there's a little bit of time, you fall back to what you really are. Yes. So if you are a girl and you see that this brother is interested in missions and you go and pretend that you are interested in missions, you know, after some time, you, you see that because it's not so real, you fall back to what you really are, which is you are interested in fashion. Are you there or you are leaving? Yes. So when I say set your heart, it's to set your love. So God there, he's watching us, pa, and he's asking what we set our love on. But if you really do it from the bottom of your heart, look at the reward. He says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Amen. God will deliver you. I will set him on high. 
How many want God to set you on high? God is the one. When God sets you on high, nobody can bring you down. Amen. Amen. God himself will promote you. Amen. Girls, when God gives you a beloved, nobody can take him away from you. Amen. Yes. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to straw and clutch at him. You don't have to propose. He himself will hear the song. Oh, brother, propose to me. The spirit will speak to him. I wrote that song to encourage brothers to propose. I see you going on high. Why? Because you set your love on him. Because you know his name. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will answer him. Today marks the beginning of answers to your prayers. The most impossible of all your prayers will be answered this year. In Jesus' name. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. He didn't say there will be no trouble. There's nothing like that. There will be no trouble. There's always trouble. <laughs> How many have realized that there's always some kind of something? He didn't say there will be no trouble. He said, but I will be with him in trouble. So whatever trouble you are experiencing... I prophesy he will be with you in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. You'll be honored highly by God. You who were not even greeted when you were coming to church, you'll be honored by God. And verse 16, with long life. That is what we mean by crossing 70 with ease. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? I see you crossing 30 with ease. Amen. Crossing 40 with ease. Amen. Crossing 50 with ease. Amen. Crossing 60 with ease. Amen. Crossing 70 with ease. Amen. Crossing 80 with ease. Amen. Crossing 90 with ease. By the time you are 100, most of your friends will not be around. So I don't want you to cross 100 so easily. I'll leave it at 90. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Blessed be the verse 3. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them that are in trouble, in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. God will comfort you in every trouble. You see, he didn't say there will be no trouble. He said he will comfort you. Yes. Now, the word comfort is the word solace. Solace. What is the meaning of solace? Can somebody tell us what is the meaning of solace? God is going to comfort you in any kind of trouble you find yourself. You are going to receive the solace. What does it mean, solace? I need the meaning of solace. Beautiful. It means what? Comfort in times of distress. Yes. But you see, it comes 
from a word solas. Is there anybody here who speaks French? Solas. What does solas mean in French? Huh? Is there any French? You people, you did French. I don't know what school you went to. Keziah has traveled. Keziah, are you watching? We are finding the meaning of solas. Okay. It comes from a word solas, which means pleasure. Yes. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but an old word. So, shh. Hello? God is going to give you comfort, cheer you up, going to give you pleasure. It's going to soothe your life, Amen. even in times of trouble. Amen. Yes. For what? For, for loving him. For setting your heart on him. Yes. You'll never be without comfort. Amen. I love that verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 says, God who comforted us. Amen. Verse 4. He comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive the comfort of God in every situation. Romans chapter 8 verse 38. I am persuaded. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels Ah, no devils, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come. Hallelujah. No height, no depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. There is nothing that can separate you from God's love when God has fixed his love on you. Oh, man. He says, I'm convinced, no height, no depth, no creature, no powers, no any human being, no height, no depth, anything that is high or low or creature is able to separate you or disconnect you from God's love. And that's what he said in Psalm 91 verse 14, because he has set his love on me, I will deliver him, I will honor him. I will set him on high. I will answer his prayers. I will be with him in trouble. This is your portion. Yes. Lift your hand and thank God that you have chosen to place your heart on top of his heart and align your motive for this life with him. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for all that you have done for us. We, now everybody just pray for your heart that God Give me a soul winning heart, a soul winner's heart, Lord. Somebody who does your will, serves you with all their heart. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. Lord, give us the comforts, give us the peace, give us the pleasures, give us the restoration that come to those who set their hearts on you and hold those who choose to love you. We choose this day to love you as soul winners. We choose to place our interests aside, personal interests, and we choose your purpose. And we thank you that you are taking note of how we've made your purpose in this earth our purpose. Thank you. Lay your hand on your heart. Receive the heart of God into your heart. No matter who you are and where you are in this life, no matter your troubles, no matter your problem, no matter your difficulty, no matter the situation you are in, may God give you his heart. And may he answer your prayers in time of trouble. May he remember you. May he lift you on high. May he deliver you in time of trouble. May he rescue you in the dark day. May his light shine in your darkness. May his answers come true for you. May there be a breakthrough. May there be a good surprise. May there be a good surprise in the midst of evil. 
and in wicked days and evil days, may that be a good surprise. Good news, good news, good news for you. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for making us so winners. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here today, you want to give your life to Jesus. Pastor, please pray with me. I want to give my life to God today. I don't know where you are, who brought you to church. But if today you want to give your soul, the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Today, your soul will not be lost because God is calling you to come to him. If you are here, you want to give your life to God, lift up your right hand. And I'm going to pray with you as we close. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ and be born again today. Then lift up your right hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, come to me right in front here. Come. 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 Come from where you are standing. I want to pray with you. Come. Jesus. Come, let me pray with you. Come to Jesus. Come and let me pray. God wants to save you, change your life. Say this prayer with me. Lift your hands and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Please wash away my sins. No, say it out loud from your heart. Please wash away my sins. Make me a good person. Change my life. Wash my sins with the blood of Jesus. Today, I open my heart and I give my life to God. Say it again. I give my life to God. I give my heart to God. I give my life to God in the name of Jesus. Come into my heart. Say after me, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart and change me. Save me. Thank you for saving me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. From today, I'm a child of God and I will serve Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say after me, thank you, Lord. Please write my name. Please write my name in the book of life. Please write my name in the book of life. Today, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Now, wait a minute. Give them the books. Give them one book each. Give them one book each. Beautiful. Now, lift your, lift your book up like this. Say after me, Satan. Close your eyes and pray. Say, Satan. In the name of Jesus, I bind you. From today, I am born again. And I will follow Jesus. I belong to God. And I'm following Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now lift your two hands. Say thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. When we close, listen, all of you have come to pray. Are you, are you looking at me? All of you have come to pray. When we close, come here. I myself will come and see you there. If you don't see me, don't go home. I'm coming to pray with you. I want to pray with you before you go. Amen. So all of you holding the book, come to this corner here. I'm, if you don't see me, tell the people that you will never go. Unless you see me, they should call me. I will come and pray for you. Amen. God bless you. You may go back to your seats. As soon as we close, come back. You may be seated and receive your communion elements. Take it. This is my body which was broken for you. Drink. This is my blood which was shed for you. Whoever 
eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Oh yeah, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Oh, oh. the cup of blessing which we bless, it's the communion of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break, it's the communion of the body of Christ. Oh, this is the holy meal. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. When he had breaking, when he had prayed, he break it. I need some volume, please. He said, this is my body. This is the miracle part. Verse 25. After the same manner, he took the cup. Verse 26. As often as you eat this, you do show the Lord's death. Now, what happened at the Lord's death? The cross, the stripes. So you show healing every time you take the communion. You show the cross. Forgiveness, healing. It must be strong. Verse 27. Now, Whosoever shall eat this cup, drink this cup unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and of the blood. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself, so let him eat and drink. So check yourself. Verse 29. He that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation not discerning or seeing that it is the Lord's body you are dealing with verse 30 for this cause many are weak and many are sick and many die recently I was learning from Rick Joyner he was saying that there is a question in the church today about why people, Christians, many Christians are sick and weak and die prematurely. And he said, I was a bit taken aback by it. He said that this is the only scripture that addresses that question. Why Christians are sick and weak and dying before the time. Now, this Holy Communion is an interaction with the body. Any time you are dealing with people, and you don't recognize that this is the body precious to God. You may hate it, not knowing. Like one time I had a friend when I was in school. She thought I was the one sitting behind her. It was in a, a church meeting, a conference. So she kept using her pen to choke the knee of the person but she thought it was me I don't know how she thought it was me but she was like playing when she turned and she saw the person she was so embarrassed the person it's like maybe there's a word, a message or something comes up. have you seen <laughs> so you see when you don't know this is the body you may not behave well are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Now, in 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1, 7. This, I'm just sharing you what I read from Rick Joyner. 
and he was sharing. He said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship or communion. The word for communion is the word, that word fellowship. We, we interact with the body properly. Koinonia. Koinonia. And then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. Now, when the blood doesn't cleanse us from our sins, the door is open for weakness and sickness and death. And that comes when we don't walk in the light and we don't communion well with the rest of the body. And we don't communion with we don't recognize who we are dealing with. Not only pastors, but churches. So, opening the door to the enemy is walking in darkness. Because there are three things here. You must walk in the light. Then you must have good communion with the body. No one is too big for the body. Then the blood cleanses us from our sins. That's when the blood works. And when the blood works, the sin which is the open door, where Jesus said, sin no more that a, a worse thing should come on you, is taken away. So mystically, dealing not just with the communion elements, but the communion element is the body. He said, not discerning the body. That that thing is the body. So you fool around with communion, you are fooling with your life. You fool around with the body, you are fooling with yourself. So you must know how to relate in the church. Breaking churches, spoiling things, criticizing people, talking about things you don't know what you are talking about. Every church is important. So we must walk in the light and prevent the access of the enemy. And like Rejoina said, this is the only place that that question is addressed. Why a lot of people are sick, a lot of people are weak, and people die prematurely. So, the need for us to recognize the church is the church. The need for us to walk in the light and be careful, you know, and even to know what is precious to God. Like Jesus told John, do you love me? Feed my, my sheep. Oh. They are my precious people. So when God gives us a role to play, we have to be careful. Because we are dealing with his people and dealing with his precious body. Lest it open a door for the enemy to come in. And like Rejoiner said, this is the only scripture that addresses or even tries to even deal with that question. Yes. I was in a church once. Uh, the, pastors, I, the pastor told me, he said, he said, so many people in my church have died. So many. And I mentioned, I, I said, I, I, we hadn't seen it like that. And he said, oh, you are young. You are young. We talk about death. The pastor himself was sick. He was actually dying. His assistant was taking me around. But before the pastor could die, his assistant died. Yes. He was just sleeping in his bed in the evening. He just started to be shh, 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 after a convention. Yes. So, you know, this is his church. All the children, we are his church. All the people. God loves so much. His blood was shed. You have to be careful. Those who are Bacenta leaders, you don't care about people. You don't care about this one. Let them go. Let them come. It doesn't matter. It matters all. You have to be careful with what God touches. So like that girl who was, you are choking with a pen. But it wasn't me. It was somebody else. She was so, I don't know what she did. I'll, I'll see her <laughs> and ask her about that thing. Anytime I see her with you, I will tell her, this, this is the girl who was doing this. Because she's around. Yeah, she's not here, but she's around. She's in the system. She thought it was me. You may not think it is Jesus you are dealing with. 
And that's why Paul found his greatest shock. He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. I'm the one you are dealing with. So may every access to your body, to your life, be blocked by the precious blood of Jesus. Yes. Now notice who. He didn't say that you would, your sins, if you confess who. If you confess, it's in 1 9, 1 John 1 9. But in 1 John 1 7, it is if you walk in the light and you commune well with the body, then your sins will be forgiven and cleansed. So 1 John 1 9 says, if you confess, it goes. But 1 John 1 says that if you walk in the light and you relate well with the body, communion, do you know what communion is? Fellowship, that's where koinonia, it means to be so close to some, somebody that disconnecting will end your life. That's the definition of communion. We are supposed to be so close to ourselves as a family, as a church, that disconnecting will end our lives. It will, it will finish up everything. Yes. That's the meaning of communion or koinonia. So, as we come to his table, if there is anything I have done to harm the church, both our church and anybody's church, I pray for forgiveness. If there is anything you have done to harm the church or another church, forgive. If there is any mistake you are making with your relationship with the church, may God have mercy and cleanse us. May all other news to your body, to your breast, to your liver, to your kidney, to your lungs, to your brain, to your entire being be blocked by the blood of Jesus. Stand to your feet, please. Father, we receive the body. We recognize this as the body. Let healing come. Let healing come. Let life come into every life. Let our life be newly motivated by your power. We ask in Jesus' name, the body of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus who was spat upon, Jesus who was mocked, Jesus who was whipped, and Jesus who was killed, this is his blood. May this blood speak and answer all questions about our lives and our mistakes. May the door and the access to our souls, our spirits, and our bodies be closed. Let the blood work now and neutralize the force of words and accusations against us. Every evidence against our lives that seeks to destroy us, this blood is neutralizing and washing it away in the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus. lift your hands Father we thank you and ask for the mistakes of our lives to be cleansed our errors Lord our shortcomings our failings in Jesus name let there be an open door for heaven's blessings everyone here. Amen. I rebuke weakness. Amen. I rebuke sickness. Amen. And I rebuke death. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Go back. Amen. Go back. Amen. Go back. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. May you have the heart of Jesus. 
May your heart be changed Amen. and line up with the heart of God. Amen. May you receive his interest as your interests. May your days be filled with his work. Amen. May you have a good motivation for your life. Amen. May you have the best motivation for your Amen. life. He will live as long as you serve him. Amen. As long as you support his work. Amen. And as long as you are one of the great helpers Amen. of the heart of Jesus yes. to, to win the lost, yes. to build his church. To do his will. Amen. May his face shine upon you. Amen. And may his face shine upon all that you do. Amen. And may his favor shine upon every work that you are involved Amen. with. And may his grace find you. Yes. I bless you. Yes. Keep them, Lord. Yes. Cover them. Yes. Help them. Yes. Put their feet upon a rock. Amen. Take away the miry clay. Amen. Anything soft and slippery under the feet of your children I command it to harden Amen. and become a rock Amen. you shall not disappear Amen. you shall be present Amen. and you shall serve Jesus Amen. all the days of your life Amen. in Jesus name I pray Amen God bless you you may be seated take your offering your tithes. We are closing the service. Those outside who are enjoying fresh air, those inside who are sweating, from in about a week or two, is dressed down. You can wear your singlet. What about boxer shorts? Can you wear boxer shorts? With you? No boxer shorts. But maybe March is going to be rainy season. You never know. The way the weather has decided to change. Because this looks like March. Hmm. How many believe that we can have an air conditioning system? Yeah. Let me pray over your tides. Father, all those bringing tides, let them in increase by 10 times. In Jesus' name, amen. Please come forward with your tithes quickly. much for staying with us up until this point. This is a very important and spiritual moment in this service and I'm glad that you're here. It's time for paying our offering and our tithe and if you're watching us at home wondering how you can pay your offering or your tithe, you're watching us and you want to give to the ministry, you want to give a donation, you want to pay your tithe, God has touched your heart to give something to the ministry. Here's how you can just go on to www.dagheywardmills.org www dagheywardmills.org on the front page of that website there's a PayPal icon or an online donation icon just tap on it or click on it follow the prompt and pay and give your offering. God bless you so much and see you at the end of the service Now everybody take out a good offering that you want to give to the Lord. Amen Take out a good offering that you want to give to the Lord. You want to give a good offering to the Lord? Lift it up and let's pray. Father, thank you as we give today. Bless every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, take your booster out. Something extra. Hello? Hello? Please take your booster out. Something extra for the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor, hello, hello, hello. Are you giving your offering? I don't feel you. You are sitting by me. I don't see. Call the person. Say hello, 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 hello. Are you giving your offering or not? 
I don't feel you. I don't feel the offering. <laughs> lift your offering up and lift your booster also. We accept all currencies. <laughs> Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ashes, receive the offering.
as for bowing, as for bowing, and about too late. All right. If you're watching with us for the first time, could you please rise to your feet? First timers. Oh, all the love that we desire, yeah. There's no greater love that we could ever know. Blessed Jesus, you are my first love. There is no other love that can compare. Blessed Jesus, it is your holy love. It is your perfect love that draws us to you. And there's no other love that we desire, yeah. And there's no greater love that we could ever know. Oh, 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 oh. Blessed Jesus, you are my first love. There is no other love that can compare. Hi, thank you very much for coming to church. This is the First Love Church. We're very happy to have you here. You are VIPs today. And that's why our star sang for you and you had the dancing stars, also dancers, just to show you they're extremely important. After service, please do not be in a hurry to leave. To my left, where it says Salvation Corner, our pastor will meet you there and give you a very warm first love welcome with a chill drink. You don't want to miss that. And you heard today from our daddy, our prophet, our bishop, our personal person, Bishop Daddy on Mills, make some noise. Wow. We're very, very blessed and we're happy to have shared with him with you today and so please keep coming so you can tap into the blessings and the communion it's a fantastic combination all in one everything everything combined all right the next announcement is going to make everyone excited because it's valentine's day movie night for lovers lovables and love things oh make some noise i'm going to take it again movie nights for lovers lovables and all love things so this is the date is friday the 15th of february 2019 the venue is the silver bed cinema accra mall the rate is a cool 40 ghana seas and so please endeavor to attend if you have a crush on someone and you're still wearing a pop and cannot ask please buy them a ticket and i'm sure they'll understand the message so please brothers with pop sisters who want to send the signs and are not sure just ask are you going to take me to the movie night if he doesn't like you he'll say no if he likes you he'll say yeah if he's broke he'll say maybe so just take your signs okay creative ass production presents cool my tongue So it's on Thursday, the 14th of February, 2019. The time is 7 p.m. and the venue is right here at the First Love Center. The rate is free. And so please endeavor to attend, invite a friend to invite a friend. And it's also very nice because it's on Thursday, on, on Valentine's Day and post Valentine's Day. So even if you ask somebody out for the first time, you bring them to the free one. And if you are excited, you pay for the silver bed one on Friday. So it's still an opportunity. So if you, if you don't behave well on the Valentine's Day, you will not get an invitation for the silver bed. It's very simple. So please, let's take advantage. Those in relationships, those wearing POPs and can't forget out. This is perfect. Free on Thursday and 40 CDs on Friday. So depending on your behavior, I will know what to do with you on Friday. All right, so Strong Christian Camp 5. Make some noise! The date is the 15th, from the 15th of February to the 17th of February. And the venue is the Anakazo Bible School, Mampong. The rate is a cool 10 Ghana CDs. Register at the Mood Tangent Plaza. And we're going to watch a very short video after that. Right now, we're going to watch a video. Wow. 
Wow. You don't want to miss this. You do not want to miss this at all. LP Adams song sums up. I want to be a strong Christian. I can't sing out that imitated. So please, it's very important. Register. 10 Ghana Seas. It's perfect. You see, whether you, are, whether you are dating, whether you are not dating, just show up. This one doesn't matter. It's 10 Ghana Seas. And still, if you have a POP, you can still invite someone to the camp and pay for them. Especially if they're not very serious and you want to test them. Just say, oh, we have a serious, strong Christian camp and I want to pay for you. Even if the person doesn't attend Lighthouse, it's a perfect way. Because once they hear our daddy, ah, they'll join. So please take advantage of it. As for bowing, and about too late. Amen. Have you been blessed at the prophetic encounter service? There's no revival at seven today. But I believe we've been blessed by the prophetic encounter service. Every single time we sit under the prophet's feet, we move from strength to strength. Prophet, thank you so much for a powerful prophetic encounter service. And I believe we are becoming soul winners. Amen. Be a soul winner. Amen. Hold your neighbor's hand. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, fellowship, contribution, participation of the Holy Spirit, the 10,000 children, which includes all the important people for my life, and the first love of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. All too soon, we've come to the end of this amazing prophetic encounter service with the prophet, with the pastor, with the healing evangelist, with the author, with our personal person, Bishop Dag Heward Mills. Today's service has been amazing. Today he taught us on the blessings of a soul winner. Over the years, all these years, the prophet Bishop Dag has been teaching us on soul winning because it is the heartbeat of Jesus. If you want to listen to this message again, it will be available on podcast. The podcast, if you don't know what the podcast is it's an app go to your play store or your app store and download the podcast app when you download it in the search button in that in that app type dark keyword mills into it and then the video podcast the audio podcast and a lot of messages a plethora of messages that he has preached over the years are available to listen free of charge thank you so much for staying with us up until this point do join us same time 11 a.m next sunday we're here for the prophetic encounter service each and every sunday without fail it is our custom and we're here and we are being blessed week after week, Sunday after Sunday. We are being transformed and changed and we are being sent out into the world to win souls for God. Soul winning is so important to God and this is the place to learn how to be a good soul winner. So next time, if you can't be here physically, the First Love Center is, a, is, 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 at, the, uh, is at East Legon, situated at East Legon on the Trinity Seminary Road behind the Allied Oil Filling Station. So tell somebody, when you're coming, come with a friend, invite your parents, your family, come and sit at the feet of the anointed man of God that God has blessed our generation with. Now if you can't be here physically, you can join us on any of our social media platforms. We are live every Sunday on Facebook Live, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Periscope, and we're also live on Healing Jesus TV each and every Sunday without fail. God bless you so much. Do have an amazing week and see you next week for the Prophetic Encounter Service. Be blessed.